Okay, today guys, it's uh, Marcus from Seafaris again. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a king mackerel, Spanish mackerel, or as the Natal and South Africans call it, a coup de trace. Um, basically this is used to target uh, many different types of fish. Um, basically the main fish that we're going to be targeting is kuta or king mackerel. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make a trace that's made up with wire because these fish have big teeth. Um, and I'm going to be making one in front of you guys now and um, showing you how it's done, how we do it. Okay, the first thing we do and the first thing we use is uh, American fishing wire. Okay. Um, basically, the guys, there's, there's a debate going on all the time about what number wire do you use. Um, personally, between 5 and 7 with, uh, with number 6 wire. At the bottom over here it tells you the, the gauge of the wire. But basically, number 6 wire, I use it right through the whole trace. Some guys use thicker wire on the, on the actual bite trace and thinner wire on the front. I use it straight through. Okay, the next thing we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be using dusters. Okay, this just adds a little bit of extra flash to the bait because obviously we're using a dead bait. Um, it just makes it look a little bit more appealing to the fish. So the shinier the better. Um, Pulsator Lures makes a, a great range of different colors and different types. Um, for me personally, I'd say a pink and a pearl duster. That's the way I was taught in the beginning um, and what to use. And it's worked for me and I pretty much stick with the pink and the pearl. But there's lots of different colors, blues, live glow. Um, you know, you can, you can mix it up and change it up a bit. But to be honest with you, I don't think it's that important. It just adds a little bit of flash to the bait, which is good. Okay. Um, the next thing as well is we're going to be using mustard trebles and a, and a hoodlum lead hook. Um, as I go through the cuda baits, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more and explain a little bit more in depth about these, these things. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the lead wire. So basically, I'm unraveling a bit of this American fishing wire. Um, I'm going to make it uh, slightly longer than the actual bait. Um, this reason is if the fish feeds up and actually eats up the bait um, and the wire folds back over the bait, um, it doesn't actually bite you off. So basically, I'm making the lead wire a little bit longer than, uh, than, uh, than the bait itself. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm using a, a bigger hook. You can use a bobbin, a fly tying bobbin, a gaff, um, a rivet, a nail, anything you want to. Something with a round edge. Um, I'm doing a haywire twist. If you want to have a look, it is on the back of the, of the packaging of the American fishing wire as to how to do it. I'm not going to go into too much depth about doing that today. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to go through that quite quickly. So basically I'm bending it around to make a nice round edge um, and I'm attaching it to my lead hook. This is what's going to, you're actually going to be trawling the bait by, you're going to be pulling the bait by. Okay, and I'm just doing a haywire twist. I'm going to do it quite quickly because um, we've got quite a bit to get through. So there's my haywire twist. That's my lead hook. And then I put my duster onto my lead wire that adds the flash in front of the bait. So that goes through there. And then on the front of that, another haywire twist. And I'm attaching a power saw. Um, power saws are a great product. It's nice and small. It doesn't create any bubble trail in the water. And the fish can't see it so well. Uh, these things break at a ridiculous breaking strain. And I've never ever had one uh, break on me. Um, they're made in Japan. Again, power saws, great product, really good to use. Okay, again, haywire twist just to uh, finish it off on the front here. Just watch the bits of wire. I like to get stuck in, into carpets and that kind of thing. So that's my lead wire. As you can see, my lead wire is longer than the bait. I'll show you why just now. Okay, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a, the one snoot for a hook. Basically, a big cooter's mouth, or king mackerel's mouth, is about the width of my hand. So my spacing on my hooks on my bait is about the width of a hand. So I go by that rule. You know, if it bites on the face, halfway down the bait or near the tail, you basically want a hook that's going to, that's going to hook up on the fish. So I'm quite specific in measuring, I actually have my bait in front of me and I actually make my trace to the size of the bait. So my lead hook is going to be in the nose, my spacing, 
and I'll measure where the first treble is going to go. I'll just bend that around. Basically, that's my first one. Again, you know, talking about the trebles, um, there's a lot of different trebles on the market. Uh, must it make a great product? Um, you must just be careful when buying it that you want to buy at least a three extra strong. If you have a look in the packaging, it tells you it says three extra strong. That's the minimum you want. You actually want something stronger than that. You want a 3x to the strongest treble they make is a 6x. Basically, that's the strength of the hook and the thickness, the diameter of the hook. So it actually makes it stronger. It doesn't open, doesn't bend open. Again, I'm just doing my haywire twist here. So this is going to be my short treble. short one. So I'm going to put one side and then I'm going to have a longer snoot with a longer treble. And I'll show you that now how wide that is. Just cutting my wire a little bit longer. Okay, and I'm just using my round edge and my hook. Bending it around. I'm spacing it so that I've got a hook near the back of the bait. Using my fingers. Again, another round edge. Obviously, if you're using a, a bigger bait, you can use a bigger treble. This is a size 4. That's what we most normally use, is a size 4 and a size 2 treble. Um, for like bonnies and that kind of thing, you can go right up to like a size 1, even a 1 0 treble if need be. And again, you can put more than one treble in line uh, down the bait. Okay, there's my hair wire twist. And I have my two treble snoots. Okay. Now basically I'm going to attach this to the lead wire. To my lead hook. This is what actually pulls the bait with it. Again, this is another product by, um, by Pulsator. They actually come made up. Some of them are wrapped in vinyl. Some of them are not. It's a bait swimmer. What it does is it actually kills the bait. So you can buy these things. Um, they are available if need be. Um, otherwise you can just use just a normal Kendall. I mean, sorry, a normal hoodlum, which is your normal hook. Again, this hook's not that important. You're literally just pulling the bait by it. So, but this is a very strong hook, a very good hook. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the, the one snoot on the one side of the lead hook. So it goes through like this. That's the long snoot. And again, hey, why I twist that off. Now your lead hook's going to be in the, your lead, your lead wire is going to be in the center. Your one hook's going to be down the one side of the bait, and your other hook's going to be down the other side of the bait. So I'm actually going to go on the other side. I'll show you guys that now close up. So that one's on the other side of the bait. Okay, and that's my cutter twister. Well, let me just show you this close up. Basically, you've got your lead lead wire, you've got your sensor, your sensor bait swimmer, and your lead hook, and you've got one treble on the one side, other treble on the other side. I'll show you this now when you're rigging the bait. Basically, you take your mackerel. This is a slimy mackerel. Your lead hook goes through the center of the 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 bottom jaw, around the bottom jaw bone, and right out the center of the nose. So basically like that, it's dead center. Okay, and basically what I did, as I said, the one treble goes on the one side, and I just hook it into the bait like that, and the other treble goes down the other side, and hook it into the bait. And then the lead wire, that's what's attached to your line. So you can see there, that basically, that's how you're pulling the bait by. Okay, the other thing as well, is you can see that, that weight underneath the chin, that kills it and makes it swim straight when you're trawling it through the water. You really want to fish these quite slow, about uh, 3 kilometers per hour. Don't go over 4 kilometers per hour. And then again, as, you, as I said, you know, I made my lead hook longer. So if, a, if the fish eats up the bait, um, 
and the wire folds back, he's not going to bite you off. Another thing as well, as I said, with the spacing of the, of the thing, whether the cooter bites it at the back, in the middle, or on the nose, there's a hook that's going to get him. doesn't matter where he bites. I mean, that's what I go by. My hand width is my spacing between the trebles. And that there is a, is a cooter trace or a king mackerel trace.